Hello and welcome to This is Metal with Tom Collier. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and we also have with us um, uh, Leif, uh Taylor, um, the owner of Chaotic Risk uh, TV. Um, welcome, welcome everybody to the show. Our special guest, of course, is Steve Blaze, the guitarist and founding member of Lillian Axe. Now, Steve, we're talking, of course, about Lillian Axe today, but before we get into all that, I know you're promoting um, Blaze Method. Will you let the folks know what, what is Blaze Method and how they can uh, find out more about it? Absolutely. How you guys doing, man? Nice to be on. Doing great. Um, the Blaze Method is uh, my, uh, it basically, it's videos of guitar lessons. Um, you know, I started playing when I was six, right? So I played classical and flamenco for many years until I got into rock and roll. And uh, when I started Lillian Axe and started, you know, we started playing around a lot. I had a lot of kids wanting to take lessons and I had never taught before. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I started to do so and I had probably over 100 students. Now, time was not permitting for me to do uh, what I wanted to do with it takes a lot of time, right? Of course, yeah. And so I wound up as the band progressed and wound up, you know, getting signed, etc. I had to, to kind of put the whole teaching thing aside. But uh, over the years, I've had a lot of people, you know, they they're not satisfied with the types of lessons they're getting. Uh, when they go and sit down with a teacher, it's great because it's one on one. But after the lesson's over, unless they videotaped it, it's gone forever. Except yeah, for yeah. what's in their head, what they can remember, or what they hopefully wrote down, right? Yeah. So I wanted to be able to reach a lot of people. So I came up with a system where I pre-recorded lessons, okay? They are designed for people just starting out or knowing a little bit about it, all the way to intermediate. Okay. And to be honest with you, I've been playing for 56 years, right? Yeah, and we're I all about still, that age. Yeah, my friend. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to like put it on. Uh, but um, I still can listen to a guy that's been playing for a couple of months and learn something from him. Yeah, yeah. yeah so sure. I just, I basically, what I'm teaching in these lessons is my outlook on guitars. Like a lot of people, they know what a chord is and they know sure, what a scale sure. is and whatnot, but they don't understand it and they don't understand how the, the mechanics of the guitar neck. They get confused. Where do I go? Why? Where is an E scale? Where does this start? And so my system teaches them not only to have fun and showing them chords and, and exercises for more better dexterity and riffs and stuff. I teach them how to play certain Lillian Axe songs. Wow. I talk about songwriting. I talk about the mental aspect of playing guitar. And I show them piece by piece how to understand the neck of the guitar. The rest of it is in how much you practice and how much you put into it, like in any profession or whatever what you put into it the good thing about these lessons are that they are recorded yeah, and yeah. so you will have them forever so anybody that signs up and they're not they're not expensive man a one-on-one -on -one lesson for an hour can cost 80 to 100 dollars right wow. these are for these lessons it's if you buy them in bulk of four it's 100 bucks 25 dollars a lesson wow or, that's not or bad. if you buy one at a time it's like 30 yeah. a lesson if you buy but you have them forever and they go from one right now i've done eight lessons so far wow uh, so in in all the people that have been taken so far are like man I, you know one guy's like i've been playing 30 something years and i never understood this and then you know it's i make it easy because i'm very down to earth with you know like i sure, that's sure. my personality I just tell you this is how it is this is what then try to explain it in terms yeah. that aren't confusing so and that's, I'm that's doing that. yeah my, my co-host tom he's um He's in a band called uh, Held Hostage out of New York. And very much like yourself, he's the principal songwriter, guitar player in the band. So I know he's got a lot of questions for you. Um, take it away, Tom. Sure. Hey, hey Tom. Steve. Nice to meet you, brother. Hey, I've hey, been buddy. following your band for many years, and I just want to congratulate you on signing with Brave Words. They're great Thank guys. You. I know Tim personally. Actually, we hung out oh. in Syracuse, New York a while back. Yeah. He was very on cool, the man. Metal Fest. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'll be out in California. I'm playing the Metal Hall of Fame, and then I'm Playing metal oh, really? tonight with the yeah, uh, they with good for, for you, man. Anniversary. Yeah, so where are you going to be in March? Are you going to be back in New York in March? Yes, yes, I'll be back in New York in March. Are you coming through? You're, are yeah, you we're playing uh, Gramercy Theater. Is that the name of it? Yeah, yep, Gramercy Theater. Nice, nice. I'll have to is, check you guys out. Definitely. Yeah, you guys what do. do? We'll hang out. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you're, are you going to the metal hall in California? Are you going to be out that way or not? No, no. When uh, is that going to be? Is that that's going to be uh, January 25th. 25th. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, I'm, we're going to uh, be in end. That's awesome, man. Good for you. Yeah, I'll be here. I've got to, I've really got to buckle down with, uh, right. We've got to have this new record ready by the end of the year. So yeah. well, I love I'm Tim. in my. Tim is a great guy that owns the label there. Uh, yeah, I, he, he seems him. like it. I, I'm really looking forward to it. Brave Words is a great organization. Yeah. And, you know, the, the guys that, uh, the, the the heads of our label global rock that we're on right now are partners with them in this new endeavor so well, it works exciting. all nicely together and uh so i'm i'm my head's uh just all into the the writing mode right now so nice oh, is wow. a new album written is a new album written no <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you man this is uh and you guys will probably be my first interview that i talk about this but uh. the i am everything is for the most part and i'm not going to say that i may not reach into my archives and pull an idea out here or there, but everything is pretty much completely fresh right now. And um, what the way we did from womb to tomb was like that. Like we went in, I had like I do with this album too as well, but on from womb to tomb, I was very well mentally organized before we went in. I knew what I wanted to do. This was going to be a concept record starting off with, conception of a child all the way through life lessons learned oh, through I like that. And ending with death and the ascension into heaven and so that's that's how we went when we recorded we recorded in chronological order so the first song breathe that's the first thing we recorded nice. then we and then as in the next piece because it's it's a it's a conceptual record i know that's a, a taboo term but it is conceptual in that it is, there is a story behind it and it has, there's a lineage throughout the whole thing. Every piece links into the next piece to tell the story. Um, and so then we did I'm Beyond Second, which is about the actual birth of the child and awareness. And so all the way through that. So we recorded in order. So when we got to Ascension, which is this big bombastic with choir filled, heavy, just uh probably the most epic song i've ever written and um when we get to that the album is over with and we just like spewed every ounce of energy we had into that recording wow. and it shows um and so on this album which is tentatively titled the 10 commandments oh, um wow. it's going to be it's going to be right now loosely based cuz you know our stuff you know, barring of the, the some of the early stuff, which was kind of reflective of, you know, being young kids. Mm -hmm. But we always touched into that, the spiritual aspect of life, the unknown, the, the, the emotional side of life events and the human condition. So on this album, I've taken each of the Ten Commandments, which no matter what your religious preference are, even yeah. if you're atheist, those Ten Commandments should be guidelines for everybody to live a proper life you yeah. can't say oh man you know it's okay for me to kill people and say oh well that's okay if that's your belief system no it doesn't <laughs> yeah, work yeah. there are yeah. certain things that just aren't by universal human, in, human, yeah. in humanity yeah. they, these are what i consider in my opinion and, and i'm writing them so my opinion is what i'm trying to portray um each one of these songs is is based on one of the commandments now not directly like i didn't write a song called thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife but yeah, yeah. <laughs> i will write a song maybe about thievery or um uh, or stealing emotional theft or whatever something that ties in with what we're being taught as people to be and that could be a very negative aspect it could yeah, be yeah. positive i don't know to like get there so um the first song right now is written and we're gonna we're gonna do two at a time so we keep the momentum going and go. uh start tracking probably like in february but it's up to me to get uh my butt in gear and it's uh it's a tough process because sometimes i will be like just spewing them out you know and then sometimes uh, i follow my gut instinct and sometimes it takes a little longer you know like on this song i've had this thing pretty much written in my head for a month but there's one piece that 
that's just kind of just at a standstill, not sure where to go. So I don't write traditionally like most people do. I write in my head. Uh, I'll be just in the car. I'll be riding around. I'll be just walking through the house. Or I may have a guitar with me. I actually have trouble writing with a guitar in my hand more than just hearing it in my head sometimes. Oh, yeah. Because you tend to just start to yeah. play and, and riff off and have fun playing. Mess around. Instead of, no, you got to listen to the song. you got to let these ideas culminate in your head. And you got to let your soul tell you, what do you hear next? What, what instrumentation? What kind of dynamic do you feel when you come out of this section? So that's where I am on that. But, um, yeah. well, you know, it's you know, an exciting we're all, thing. Yeah, we're all Lillian Axe fans. And I know Lethal X, our, our other host uh, today, um, he would tell me what a huge fan he is of yours. So um, I'll give him a chance awesome. to ask you some questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing, Steve? Hey, what's so, going on, man? How are you? I'm pretty good. I actually have, if you can see it, I can see there, it, a Poetic Justice, Justice CD um, from way back uh, when yeah. you guys were first starting out in the early years. Um, I'm going to be honest, I lost a little bit of time between albums um, with you guys. And then I went back right. and checked it and I'm like, they're actually heavier now. They actually got a hard, <laughs> harder edge to them. And I like that, you know. Um, and, and I know you switched singers up and some other things. And I, I watched a couple of videos where how you cut the new singer in the band. Right. And those types of things. Um, but I'm really liking what I'm hearing from the womb for the tomb it was really good. Um, Thank you. And there's some other stuff that I, you know, I've watched a couple of videos I've seen. Um, Days Before Tomorrow was yeah. another one that was um, it kind of stuck in my head. Um, and so, yeah, you know, feelings of absolute. That was kind of what I I noticed. I, I really was that. I watched a couple of your live performances too, just to see the energy going on. I want to be honest, haven't been to a concert. Um, okay, well, where uh, are you living? Where do you live? I, I'm in Florida. Oh, so I'm down in the Tampa here. area. Oh, okay. Well, hope I wish we could make it out there. I know we're gonna we're in Atlanta is the closest place. New Orleans and Atlanta, but on this run, but um, you know, hopefully we get to Florida soon. We did a couple of dates in Florida, maybe uh over the summertime or whatever, but we didn't come by come to Tampa. But we love Tampa actually. Um, yeah. But yeah, I agree with you, man. You know, it's it's you know, and people, it's kind of funny because at the end of the day, you have to do what is right for you if i write music just to please everybody else and i'm a phony you know what i'm saying um mm -hmm. i have to write the kind of music that i feel um is an expression of who the five guys in this band are what are right. what do we think about what do we talk about what do what do we feel is our strongest musical output that we can give to the world okay and so you know you're gonna when you have a long history you're going to go through changes when you have a long history, unless you're rushing, you get real lucky and only change drummers once. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that's a rarity, very rare. And it's understandable. Think about it. If you've got a 40 year history, which sure. we do, oh. yeah, wow. I mean, think about it. I mean, how many people are with the same woman, yeah, yeah. Uh, partner, yeah. boyfriend, exactly. husband, you know, how many th best friends? I mean, think about your friends you had 40 years ago and who they are now. You probably don't even remember. Or you, you know, you, you may be lucky to have a few of them still. Yeah. But life changes. Right. The one constant is our love for music and my love for continuing to express those things that I that I think will move people and, and that I think will make people feel spiritually and emotionally good inside. And that's that's what we do. And, you know, um, as we've changed, I mean, it, and, and these I, these are things that I'll say to you because, you know, I'm real close with the fans. I listen to what they say. They they'll come out. They'll tell me exactly. They don't like something. They'll say something. And I have no problem with that as long as you're being polite and not rude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Sure. But a lot of them are like, man, you take from womb to tomb, you take the first album and they are, you know, they could be two different bands. But no, they sent you still have the same melodic sense, the same guitar styles and the same type of melodies and arrangements that you did. And I don't want to sound like we did in 1988 or 89. I'm very proud of those songs and we still play a lot of them live because we play them how we are now. And a great song is a great song, period, no matter how it's played, as long yeah. as it's played, yeah. you know, properly and in key. Right. So, right. but you know, that's an important aspect. I feel like from womb to tomb, if somebody said, all right, you know, it's like picking your child. What, who's your favorite child? You don't have one. They're all uniquely 
important. And that's how our yeah. records are. But if somebody said, you're only going to be able, you have to pick one or we're going to cut your leg off. Uh, I would go with From Womb to Tomb as the best example, the quintessential Lillian Axe album. Hey, and let me ask you, Steve, because I know, um, although the lineup has changed um, several times, you're the one constant in the band, and you're the principal songwriter, which um, interesting thing I've noticed over the years is, in spite of the fact that you're a guitar player, not the singer, but you write everything pretty much, um, despite the lineup changes, there seems to be this Lillian Axe sound, if you know what I mean, and I think your songwriting has a lot to do with that. I think that that's true, and that's when, you know, especially in bands, that have major changes. If you lose the songwriter, that's that's about as important as yeah. I think it's the, the the worst loss you can have in a band. Sure, sure. You can, you know, you can, you know, and, and you know how it is with with bands and singers. They're always going to gravitate to the singer that was with them at their earliest stage. Yeah. Because human beings gravitate to their past. Yeah. Because it's we're we're I think deep down inside we're all sentimental to a certain degree. So you think about it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter the band. Take ACDC for yeah, example. Yeah. Bon Scott was great, no doubt. Brian Johnson comes in and they sell zillions of records. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah. How about let's appreciate them both for what they have given the world. That's my attitude. Yeah. And we're not exempt from the people that are like, oh, I, I like. The first singer from the first, you know, yeah, yeah, because that's when you were 20 and that's when life was different for you. And it's sentimental. I get it. But those albums are always going to be there with you. You you will never lose those. But hey, grow with us as yeah. we move forward. The songwriting aspect, you know, what's the most important thing about any band on the planet is the song. It's not the singer, the guitar player, the drummer, the bass player. It's the song, right? I mean... When you see a cover band going and playing Back in Black, they're singing the song, right? Mm -hmm. That song has the life. That's what lives forever is the song. The rest of us are here just to add the flavor to it. Sure, so sure. being the, the constant songwriter through all the albums, I think has, and, and look, that's one thing about this band. None of our songs sound like each other. They really don't. I can mm -hmm. honestly say, I'm glad, I'm happy, but we don't have that. But we have certain characteristics in our music that stay constant from record to record. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, uh, Steve, I, I was watching uh, or listening to another uh, interview I, I seen you on the internet talking about, um, I don't think anybody's heard this story. Um, I was surprised that you had something to do with getting uh, Bill and Selmo in Pantera. Yeah. Um, what happened is we knew the guys in Pantera because we were doing the same circuit. We were both yeah. cover bands, playing originals and trying to get signed. So, we were opening up for uh, Rat and Queensryche. Uh, we did a bunch of shows as an unsigned band, right? They asked us to, to open five shows because our draw was so strong. Um, as an unsigned band, they knew it would help tickets, which is good. That's fine. That's smart. And so I remember we snuck in Vinny and Rex and, and Dime but, uh, into, I think it was Shreveport. I was the closest one to them. And they were looking for a new singer. <laughs> And when you feel, because he was uh, singing for a, a band called Razor White down in New Orleans, who was kind of like our our underlings. We were, took them under our wing and we were they were opening shows. And, you know, and it, it Phil, you know, he's, he's a good singer, you know, and he he built the Queensryche and all the stuff that was kind of in their genre at the time, what they were doing, because they were just like they were like a Queensryche metal band. That's what they were doing, you know, doing still look like all us other knuckleheads wearing, a, you know, spandex and torn up shirts and all that kind of crap we're all doing the same thing trying to find our identity and then we recommended phil they auditioned him and then and then the next thing you know he was in the band so and you and you mentioned rat let me ask you um can you share um, what it was like working with um rob and crosby from rat i understand he produced one of your albums yeah he produced the first album when we did those shows that i was talking about after the second show the head of the security came up to me and said hey steve um uh, can i get your phone number marshall burl who was Rat's manager yeah. wants to call you. And I was like, oh, okay. okay. It's like the whole idea of us doing these shows was, you know, what we've been, you know, Working promised for the last few years. And, you know, it's like, you know, just go in every avenue you're trying to see, maybe this is the one, maybe this one. So I kind of, I had a feeling that either they were going to ask me to join Rat <laughs> or they were going to, you know, there was a problem I didn't know about, or they, there was something having to do with the band. 
So uh, next thing you know, we had only done two of the five shows. I get a call. I think it was a Monday morning real early. Like Marshall was in L.A. time. So it was probably like eight his time or seven his time. And it was like nine my time, which is at that moment in my life, I was not getting up that early. Yeah. So I woke yeah. up from sleep and he was like, yeah, I see you. This is Marshall Burl. How you doing? And I popped up. Yes, sir. How you doing, man? What's going on? He goes, Steve, how would you like a record deal? And so it was like one of those moments that you, as a kid, you're dreaming that's going to pop up and happen. So that's what happened. He said, yeah, Robin really likes the band a lot. He wants to produce your first album, too, as well. So I was thinking about having, you know, you guys get together and meet and all that kind of stuff. So we actually, that, that was the, the start of uh, the next yeah shoot i don't know six months eight months of just lots of stuff <laughs> you know getting everything together and mca flying out to see the band at the time and the contractual stuff and you know just trying to figure out how we're going to do this what we're going to do this and um wound up robin uh produced first album spent three months with him at cherokee studio in la and he was just one of the kindest nicest guys you ever want to meet uh, so I mean, that's I, what everyone said. Well, what, what, what a sad way that he had to go the way he did. Yeah. Know? Great guy. Um, yeah. Well, um, before we wrap up the interview, I want to give the other guys a chance to um, ask um, if they have any more questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So I know what you're talking about, how a band evolves. I've been going for 40 years and I've had singers from Joe Lynn Turner to <laughs> Ripper Owens to myself. Right. I'm the lead singer. So no, exactly. But I'm the, I'm the principal songwriter. And all my albums continue to evolve. I write all the songs. And my right. next album is even better. In fact, Ripper and I just did a project together, too. We just finished it up a couple of weeks ago. But, really? Uh, I'm, yeah, oh. yeah. I'm actually the president of the Fire Rock Music Group, the record company. Oh, man, you got to keep me posted. I'd love to hear that, man. Yeah, yeah. We, we got. A we did it. We opened for Priest when he was singing in, uh, oh, nice. where was it? Houston, I think it was. Yeah. Now, I've never met him. We actually played his club. He had a club. I don't know if he still is in Ohio. Owner. You know, he got rid of it. Yeah, he did have a club in Ohio. Yeah, we played there with uh, what was it Faster Pussycat, and we did the Great America Rocks tour. But let me ask you a question. I'm gonna interview sure. you. Sure. Do you find that it is a blessing and a curse to be a songwriter? I do, but I love it. I wouldn't. Have, All right, I but tell me. Here. I know what the blessing is. You tell me what's the curse of being a songwriter. I always try to top myself. So <laughs> my new album, and everybody says to me, they all say, like, my my epic album sold thousands and thousands of copies. How are you going to beat that one? I came out with Great American Rock two yeah, years yeah. ago. 18, 18 weeks on the Billboard charts, 9 out of 12 songs charted. My new album, Rescue Me, is going to be even better. But everything I do is like you. It's true to life. I help right. veterans. I help uh I did a song called Rise Ripper and I did together for suicide people, you know, helping prevent suicide. So I, I oh, love writing excellent. songs. And what I do is I'm similar to you. As my new album, it was all written. I threw six songs out and I just this week alone wrote six more songs for the album. <laughs> and I think nice. they're better. <laughs> you know? It happens like that. Now, let me tell you my curse. My okay. curse is until I have a song completed and demoed and ready to send to the band, mm -hmm. I can't get it out of my head. I yes. wake up in the middle of the night with my teeth doing the drum beats <laughs> and the patterns. Sometimes I'll write, you know, that when you lay down and you close your eyes yep. and you got a little bit of peace, yep. that's when I'll, I'll start writing, like getting the idea. And sometimes you have to have your phone next to you because the idea will come when you're semi asleep. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get up right then and there and get that phone and hum it into the phone and stuff like that, you lose it the next morning, won't remember it. So right. that's my curse is I can't get the dang song out of my head until it's completely done. Then I don't even think about it because it's on to the next one. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I got to say, Steve, it was great talk, uh, catching up and talking to you again. Um, and I know the other guys feel the same way. You're welcome to come back anytime, my friend. Um, and this interview we just did will probably be posted about uh, a week or two. So um, once I have a date for you, I'll, I'll let you know. But thanks for taking part into today's show, Steve. Perfect. Really enjoyed hey, talking look, to you. we we. We go on tour in March. Maybe I'll come on right before the tour and you got give it. the dates. Yeah. And uh, anytime y'all want to have me on, please give me a call. And I'll tell you what, once, yeah, once the new album's ready to drop, let me know and we'll do like a live review of it. Oh, absolutely. That'd be great. I appreciate yeah. that. Man. And, and okay. Steve, this is why Jason and I kind of started this years ago together. We've been doing this for quite a while now, starting out as a print all the way 
on the web free to now we're doing the video stuff is because we want to give people an opportunity to get the word out there. What's going on yeah. with bands, you know? And it's a lot hard of the to find older out bands are so many bands. And it's, you know, it's not like in the old days and when a record company had two or three bands and they put everything into it and they yeah. promoted it. And uh, nowadays it's like it, a blessing and cursing. And you've got the ability to get your stuff out there, but there's a billion other people doing it. So how do exactly. you, how do you break through? And that's one fortunate thing, like guys like us that have been around a long time, at least you have a legacy and a history, but it's because we work our butts off for so well, many years. Exactly. In closing, Steve Blaze, I will say this, that a man that's had a 40-year career in the music industry, you're a legend at this point. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Anytime. <laughs> I'll Take tell care, my 14-year-old son that. <laughs> well, bye-bye. Take care, guys. All, All right. right, guys. See you later.